Intel's going straight for AMD's jugular by unveiling their next generation CPUs and GPUs and a ton of detail about it that just, oh my gosh, it's so good. Nvidia says that the ARM takeover might take a little longer than expected because regulators have a problem with it and we might be screwed for GPUs for a while. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Charles Xavier. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So let me just go ahead and use my Cerebro to get us into the idea of what Intel is talking about with their next generation CPUs, which is known as Alder Lake, and we're expecting it to come out this year. They gave us a lot of details about the architecture, how it works, a lot of the IPC improvements that they're having, and my goodness, this is crazy. So in case you're not familiar, Alder Lake is supposed to be a heterogeneous architecture, which means that it has eight big cores and eight little cores, at least on the high end SKU. So think like eight magneto cores and like eight toad cores. I, I'm not familiar with the X-Men to know what's what the lowest ranking. Anyways, you got high power cores, you got low power cores. That's the general idea. And Alder Lake, according to the benchmarks that they're showing, can compete with a 5950X having only eight high powered cores because of huge IPC gains that they're adding onto the new CPUs, a 19% IPC gain on the big cores, which is obviously a big deal. You add on to that that it's supposed to have frequencies of 5.3 gigahertz and beyond, and we can start to see why it might potentially outperform what's coming out from AMD. Also, Intel went into a lot of details of like the actual specifics of how the architecture works and how it goes wider deeper and smarter than ever before with all of the integer execution units and vector execution units. You can check it out in the link of the video description. We'll make sure that you get there. But one of the key things is not just that the performance cores are gonna be hugely powerful, but rather the efficiency cores are gonna be hugely powerful as well, which is how we get eight performance cores and eight efficiency cores equaling AMD's 16 performance cores. Like, let's put that into perspective. It, Intel is competing with less. So if they're getting close, that's actually a really big deal, even if they're not beating AMD. And the reason Intel can get this close is because the efficiency cores offer 40% more performance at the same power draw. So that's versus the previous Skylake architecture if it was on efficiency. So 40% faster at the same power draw, which is absolutely crazy. And that would mean that each of the efficiency cores is roughly equivalent to what a Skylake core was back in 2015. So Intel making huge leaps in bounds and gains when it comes to their Grace Mon efficiency cores and Alder Lake and everything that's coming out with this. Obviously, we need to take this with a grain of salt. This is Intel's benchmarks. They have lied to us in the past. They have cherry picked data before where they disabled half of AMD's cores. I think it was on the 2700X in order to show that Intel was better at gaming, but that's because they turned the 2700X into a quad core. So don't take this too seriously, but take it seriously enough to know that Intel actually might be a big deal and a big player towards the end of this year. And they're also detailing that Alder Lake is gonna be a reunified product line with everything from mobile to ultra mobile to desktop being under the Alder Lake architecture. And it's also going to support DDR4 and DDR5. This is stuff that's been rumored for a while, Intel now confirming it. And it will also have PCI Express 5.0. DDR5 gonna be a big deal because it can go up to 7,200 megahertz. It also has more density on the RAM so we could have things like 64 gigabyte sticks of RAM so that you could get 256 gigs of RAM on a single just like regular enthusiast motherboard. Also adding in that the memory controller on Alder Lake will be able to dynamically adjust memory frequency so we could see new things start to come in on this where you have like fluctuating RAM speeds that like could also have turbo clocks and be completely different depending on how Intel is using what's going on with the RAM. So everything is kind of changing in the CPU world, dynamic RAM frequencies is gonna be something cool that we could keep our eyes on moving forward and PCI Express 5.0 being a pretty big deal that Intel's going to have first. But one of the things that we're scared about when it comes to Alder Lake, or at least is the general hesitancy, is that it is a brand new architecture. It's heterogeneous, which is something that we haven't seen in things like Windows before. And Intel, thought of this and was like, hey, we can't trust Windows or the operating system to make the decisions of what to prioritize and what not to. So they made an actual piece of hardware known as the Intel Thread Director that's actually going to tell it what to do. And so that there's not a whole lot of loss that's going on because of the complex ISA or any of the instruction sets that there's not much confusion getting in there and that the scheduling is done on the chip itself rather than being decided by any sort of operating system. This is a pretty 
decent forethought by Intel here. If it works out effectively, if it actually properly does what it's supposed to, like I'm, I'm actually really excited for Alder Lake and Intel's future. They seem to have gotten their production back up online. They seem to have a good path forward when it comes to their architecture and keeping things in line with the new nodes that they're producing. And then also performance gains coming back. Like Intel is just, they're going ham and we're not even to the GPU section, which we'll talk about after we talk about today's episode sponsor, my friends, Liquid IV. This is something that I've been enjoying quite considerably ever since they started sending it to me. And Liquid IV is essentially a really easy way to get electrolytes into the water that you're drinking on a daily basis because it's well known in the hydration world that drinking water by itself is not the most effective way to get hydrated. Having electrolytes in your water is the best way to do it. Liquid IV calls theirs cellular transport technology, but the just is you're getting electrolytes in your drink with these little sachets that you pour into your water, you drink it, and then you're more effectively hydrated. Something that's actually been a key concern of mine, especially as I've been working out more. My muscles have been cramping Mrs. Puff a lot more. And so just making sure that my muscles and my body are properly nourished with hydration makes it so that I'm not cramping as much. And Liquid IV has been a key player in that. They have a whole bunch of flavors that you could try out from the tangerine to the lemon lime to the brand new, as of yesterday, the yellow cherry tangerine green was my favorite flavor by far until I tried yellow cherry. Absolutely love it. We'll leave a link in the video description for liquid IV, but in case you're trying to hydrate more effectively, you could do it with this. It's non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy-free, and made in the USA. It's not calorie-free. It's 45 calories per serving, but you're actually getting proper hydration out of that. And it's not like drinking a whole thing of Gatorade. So if you want to check it out at the link in the video description, if you use coupon code UFD underscore tech at checkout, you'll get 25% off and free shipping. So check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Liquid IV for sponsoring today's episode of Hot News. And now it's time to get to Intel's GPU side of things because we got more details of the Arc GPUs as well as their AI upscaling technology. Number one, we're talking about the fact that Intel Arc will have DisplayPort 2.0, which could support up to 10K 60 Hertz natively, and then up to 16K displays with display stream compression. Also more details on the actual architecture and how it's going to work. And this is way too detailed and too nuanced for me to get into here at Hot News. But if you want to know more about its vector engines and its matrix engines and its render slice and its pizza slice and its XMX, as well as its geometry pipeline, we'll leave in the link in the video description so that you can check all of this out. But the general gist of this is that the next generation Intel GPUs are actually remarkably efficient, offering 50% better performance per watt over previous Intel GPUs, such as the DG1, which is good. So it's going to be better efficiency, but they're also going to have a higher power power envelope, which means we should get a lot more performance out of just a regular power delivery. Obviously, Intel's not quoting general performance specs of it at this point, but we're expecting to see more of that rollout as time goes on. They also unveiled their AI upsampling technology, and they're calling it ZESS, or Z SS, Z Super Sampling, or XESS, however you want to call it. And it's actually rather similar to what NVIDIA is doing with their deep learning super sampling in that they're using matrix multiplier cores, tensor cores, as NVIDIA calls it, or as Intel calls it, their XMX hardware units, but it's doing matrix math in order to calculate all of the stuff that the AI is doing to then upscale the video games, or it could use DP4A instructions, which is actually found on a whole bunch of GPUs. So Intel's actually going to be launching the SDK for this later this month in open source and the DP4A version will be available later this year, but their super sampling pipeline is coming out. Hopefully we can see what performance gain this might give us as well as just whether or not this can be as good or better than native like Nvidia tends to claim with their deep learning super sampling. I'm looking forward to it. Intel seems to have a lot of good going on with their GPUs also announcing that they're gonna be on six nanometers having TSMC build their Alchemist GPUs. So they're beating AMD to TSMC six nanometer process. It really seems like Intel wants to lay the kibosh on AMD. Maybe they're trying to also directly compete with NVIDIA, but just trying to get AMD out of the way in the GPU side of the things. What do you think of Intel's new CPU setup? What do you think of Intel's new GPU setup? Are you excited for the future of hardware? It is rapidly changing. We're getting a whole bunch of new architectures and new ways of doing things. You have Apple with their M1 silicon. Now you have Intel with their heterogeneous architectures. AMD is going to be launching their multi-chip GPUs later this year. A lot is going on, my friends. I want to hear from you down below in the comments. But now let's get into the crypto 
Eurostonks update because we're seeing green, all right? We're seeing major performance increases in Intel. We're seeing major Bitcoin gains here on the daily. Up 4.82% is Bitcoin. $47,000 is what it's sitting at at the time of recording. Ethereum also up 6.5% to be at 32.39. Dogecoin also up 4.4% to sit at 32 cents. Meme stonks not having as good of a time with GameStop closing down 2.64% to close at 152.90 and AMC down 7.5% to close at 33.82. And in case you want to close the chapter of Windows 10 that you might be on, Windows 11's ISO is now available in case you want to download that from Microsoft directly on their insider program. Just fun fact, don't download ISOs from torrent websites. It's a bad idea. Just don't do it, all right? Now you're gonna see it's like, oh, it's the Windows 11 ISO, stop it. All right, just get it, sign up for the insider preview and get it from Microsoft directly. Don't don't be that shady guy who gets malware. Don't do it, it's a bad idea. And I'm not sure if it's a bad idea, but Quake did it anyways. Quake Remaster is now available, 4K Remaster being available for PlayStation, Xbox, Switch, and PC. It's only 10 bucks in case you wanna pick it up. This is happening because of QuakeCon and it's 25th anniversary of Quake. So that's happening in case you wanna check it out on Steam, we'll leave a link in the video description for that. Skyrim also getting announced to have its next generation update 10 years after the original game release. So that's November 11th of this year, which, Number one, I haven't played Skyrim, so I don't, I don't get the hype. Number two, it's essentially available on everything. Free next generation console upgrade for PC, Game Pass, Xbox One, and Xbox Series X. Cool. It, is Skyrim worth playing now? Should I should I try it out with this next generation update? Let me know down in the comments. And Corsair is updating their HS series lineup for their headsets. The HS80 getting announced yesterday, the wireless gaming RGB headset, which doesn't look like their HS lineup so much, but it doesn't also look like their Void lineup. It kind of looks like a mixture between the two. I've been hearing good things about this headset. It's gonna cost in the region of $150. Might be worth taking a look at in case you're in the market for a new wireless gaming headset. And in case Nvidia is in the market for acquiring Arm, they might want to reconsider that because uh, Jensen saying, hey, uh, our discussions with the regulators are taking longer than initially thought. We thought it was going to be a breeze. So it's pushing out the timetable, but we're confident in the deal. We're confident regulators should recognize the benefits of the acquisition. OK, now Jensen's not saying anything about the drawbacks of like they should recognize that there are this. This is not an antitrust violation. They don't have to worry about us monopolizing the field. No, 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 no. They should recognize the benefits. Do you know what a powerhouse and video plus arm could be? We could dominate the world. We could rule this whole thing, all right? It's time to go, but not if you wanna buy a GPU because Jensen also saying in an interview that he expects the GPU supply constraint to remain for most of the majority of 2022, saying I would expect that we will see a supply constrained environment for the vast majority of next year is my guess at the moment, CEO of NVIDIA saying majority of next year. Uh, and that's how I feel about the fact that this is the end of this week's episodes of Hot News. So why don't you go check out yesterday's episode where we talked about AMD, their multi-chip modules, the fact that RX 7000 might be RX 6000 rebranded. Check that out and I'll see you here again for another hot episode of News on Breakfast Monday.